And it's like, I said, you know what? I'll tell my man, listen, I'm going to jump out first. And I'm going to just survey the scene. Then I'm going to come back and tell you, you know, what's what. So you can go and make sure everything is clear. So I do that as I'm getting out and I'm walking and I'm walking up towards the chicken spot where, you know, in the respect level. And I think the respect level in life, especially amongst the youth, is, is being lost a little bit, man, because of... Like we talked about the oppie situation and the music and people just want to be enemies. There's no, there's no friendship. There's no bonds that can, you know, solve a lot of situations. So the, the, the point and the highlight of the story is this, man. I would say around 2006 at the, at the, the height of myself and my man Pistol, who I'm, who's also in the story with me of our gangbanging career. We, he's from Sterling and Ralph. In Howard, I'm from Park Place in Saratoga, so it's only less than a couple blocks away from each other. You know these these particular areas. Now my side of you know the area is Ocean Hill, Brownsville, Saratoga Avenue, Prospect Plaza area. So on that side of town, we kind of share the neighborhood with Crips in a sense. It was Crips on my side that I grew up with, born and raised with, and my man Pistol and them on their little four squares at that particular time. It was more blood than anything, you know, on the Sterling, St. John's, and Howard area. So, you know, their area, my area, with the Crips at least, always had a little bit of tension, you know what I mean, coming up. And it was a lot of bumps and bruises in the beginning of the gangbanging career. So, at this particular time, you know, I've known Pistol for over fucking, you know, 10 years at this time since junior high school. He done did his bid, I done did my thing, and we done came back to the neighborhood together, and now we all back in the neighborhood together. In our mid-20s, you know, he running his set, I'm running my set, and we kind of somewhat share the neighborhood, in a sense, myself and him. So this summer was so hot, this summer, it was so much going on, a bunch of shootings, a bunch of, you know, things that was happening that was leading to a lot of arrests and a lot of, you know, attempted murders and unfortunately a couple murders that summer it was a hot summer in 06 so one night I'm in the hood me and my man stutter you know we, we, we just ride in the hood and as you know you know in Brooklyn you know we got to keep them joints on us we always kept them joints on us and everybody know certain individuals when they riding around they keep joints on them so I'm running around in the hood on PD side my man pistol side on this we on Sterling between Ralph and Howard and I see PD walking real fast so I'm like, yo, and we, I jump out of your people's good, baby. Ha uh-huh. ha. He see me like, oh shit, yo, listen, these crip niggas over here, they fronting, shit about to go down. Uh-huh. So I'm like, you know, there's really no question because this is my man. So he already know what the time it is. So he give us the location and the description. So I said, all right, fuck that. So me and my man that I was with, well, he was a stone cold shooter at the time. He wanted to, you know, go on left, whatever happened with that brother. So he was a stone cold shooter. So he ready to go. So we jumped back in the truck and Petey, you know, said, yo, I'll meet you back around there. He tells me the location where this young man and him is at, a bunch of these dudes. So I get around to, you know, where the location is. And it's like, I said, you know what? I'll tell my man, listen, I'm going to jump out first. And I'm going to just survey the scene. Then I'm going to come back and tell you, you know, what's what. So you can go and make sure everything is clear. So I do that as I'm getting out and I'm walking and... I'm walking up towards the chicken spot where, you know, this is on St. John's and Ralph at the time. I'm walking towards the chicken spot. And as I'm walking towards it, I start noticing a couple familiar faces. And I'm looking like, wait a minute. When I look in the door, and I I just couldn't believe, like, I can't be, man. So I just happened to get closer. And I'm like, damn, it's it's the cryptos that, you know what I'm saying, that's like family to me, you know? Because like I told you, we, on my side of town, we, you know, we, we, got a a strong bond with the Crips over there. So this is an individual that's family to me, him and a couple other individuals. So at at the time, you know, color lines was kind of drawn in the neighborhood and unbeknownst to the little Crip dude, he don't really know what's going on, but he had did some stuff on that side in his past. And he's in this, you know, he had did something to PD and and, and peoples or whatever happened. And he's just over there, you know, kind of what these young dudes say lacking. So I see him, I'm like, damn. So before I even, you know, approach him, I go holla at my man Pistol and him, and he got his his squad is already mounted up. Everything is ready to go. 
So I holler at, you know, the brother Pistol to the point I say, listen, man, I need to talk to you. I pull him to the side. I say, listen, my brother, this is what I'm asking. I didn't even say my brother. I said, listen, homie. I need a favor from you, man. I, I'm asking you for a pass. I went over there, and we was about to do what we was about to do, but that individual that you're about to move on is family to me. And he was so enraged, he probably didn't, it, it didn't click to him because he had seen us on the humble. So he just put us on point, and he knew at that time we might have had something on us before he could get to where he needed to get to. So he just put us on to the target before. So he's still enraged. He's not screaming, not yelling. He's looking like what? You should. Ah, uh, he's he's such in a he in a tight spot at this particular time. But I say, listen. All I'm asking, bro, is for a pass. You know, from one brother to another. You know, we we got a lot of history together. I understand some of the things that happened and transpired between the two factions. But I'm just asking you for a pass at this time. So my brother Pistol just looked at me like, damn man, I love you, man. You my man. I got a lot of love and respect for you. I'm gonna give you this pass and just tell your man, you know, give him some instructions on how to move in the past, you know, in, in the future. So I took that with, with, a, with, with a sign of respect because bro didn't have to do that. And I don't think many people would have based on the history that the two factions had. So based on that loyalty and bond, because I always kept a toe with that brother, that brother always kept a toe with me. I never stepped on his toes. He never stepped on my toes. Cause we, like I said, we kind of, the two sets that I'm talking about, my side of his, kind of shared the neighborhood, and we had, you know, a working relationship where nobody necessarily stepped on each other's toes. So I took that because I had never really had no individual give me a pass like that. So after he gives me the pass, I goes back over, you know, to where this young man is at in the chicken spot, and I tell him, you know, listen, this is not a safe area for you to be in. You don't really need to be revisiting this area, you know, because know things may transpire with you so i think you just need to go and just not come back around here so he took it in a way he started to protest but then he started to realize like he's not in the area where he's safe so he left the area and i said i'll meet you back on the block and we'll have a conversation so long story short i had a conversation with the crib kid and let him know listen man in this life you have to be very safe and you and you're putting yourself in a position where you can fuck around and get yourself killed because you're not thinking, you're not understanding what has transpired and you sitting in a chicken spot open like that. You don't even got no nothing on you, you just there ordering chicken. Like, what are you thinking? That could have been your last meal, you know what I mean? So he kind of understood that. And then I take it back to, you know, Pistol and me and him had a further conversation. He's like, you know, I got a lot of respect for you. He, I think he had a little friction with his little man in him because they was inching to, you know, do some things. but. He held enough stature in his neighborhood because he's a respectable individual where he was able to, you know, explain to them about me and his relationship and the reasoning he gave me that pass. And the reason I even wanted to share that with you because, you know, again, I always listen to your platform, but I, I, I started to, like we talked about the music, I don't really see much passes given. I don't see much, you know, individuals befriending each other. I see just a lot of individuals searching to beef looking to fight and looking to, you know, shoot and kill each other. And I don't see any OG stepping in the middle, you know, putting anything, you know, yeah. to, to rest. I see them egging a lot of that shit on in a sense. So, you know, I just feel like, you know, the relationships that we've had in the past and a lot of individuals, a lot of those are fading, man. But I just wanted to highlight that with my man Pistol and give him, you know, his flowers. Cause that young dude that could have, you know, possibly has some habit to him is a, is a good friend of mine. He's doing good today, that dude that, you know, I wouldn't technically say I saved him, but that I intervened on, you know, that situation. Oh, he's doing good in his life. He's chilling, you know, and he moved on. So, you know? Yeah, that's, 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 that's straight realness, my bro. You know what I mean? It's like these young dudes out here nowadays, it's like it has become the fad to have ops. Yeah. Like yeah, you, you ain't a real nigga or you ain't a you ain't about nothing if you ain't got no ops. You understand what <laughs> I'm saying? And that shit is corny, my nigga. So I be listening to dudes and I literally see these dudes like coming out the house just making diss records about other neighborhoods and shit they because yeah. bro, you don't even know them niggas. Like you just thirsty to get you thirsty for your name yeah. to be in the rafters and that shit'll cost you your life. And 
that shit is corny and that that's not how Brooklyn functions. I, I mean, I can't speak for all boroughs, but I mean, Brooklyn, you know, it oh, especially Brownsville, it was always a level of, yo, look. That's that's such if it was a problem with Amboy, it was a hierarchy in Amboy that you could speak to before shit get haywire. And that was the same in every projects. Now I mean, it was a hierarchy that kept the order of shit to some yeah, extent. Back. It was OG, yeah, but brothers and kids actually listened back then. I, and also I brought the story because I don't think at this point a lot of those kids would listen to OG. I don't think a lot of those kids would allow for a pass. If they feel strong about the op, I don't think you know a lot of individuals could even go to some it's, of these young dudes. With the whole debate of mumble rap and like you know that type of music it may it caused the kind of divide you know how niggas was on a campaign saying yo this is my hip-hop and this is y'all hip-hop and yeah. this is my yeah. these are yeah. my that whole all the memes and all of that shit it caused the divide between the the younger generation and the older generation and now it's a lot of these young dudes running around out there with hatred for older niggas and and, and be anticipating getting into it with older niggas and quick to call you a old nigga because i got into a a, a problem with a little young nigga. You understand what I'm saying? In the hood not too long ago. And I and I was disappointed in myself and how I handled it because, you know, I reverted back to adolescent. Because I stopped even engaging with individuals like 25 and under, like, you know, it's just to, on, on a social level. Word. Now, building, that's fine. But I, I stopped even going to some of my young boys' function, you know, because I, I just don't, I'm just not really into some of their energy. I didn't, out of respect for myself and them, I won't put a damper on them. So I won't really engage in certain things that they got going on because I just don't feel like, you know, that- they, they not they, thinking. They not thinking all the way. They always lacking. I'm sorry to say. They they be thinking that they not lacking, but they are, my nigga. Like, you understand what I'm saying? You moving wrong. And the way you moving, you going, you going, I can't afford, I can't even afford to be fucking with niggas that's moving like that. Yeah, that's true. So, like I said, my brother, like, I don't feel like I could actually have a conversation with a brother like that to call off anything that could have potentially started a war in the midst of it. I felt respected enough to have, because that was about to turn into a situation that I might have been contributed to had I not done my surveillance of that neighborhood at that time and not got out and looked first and just was reckless and sent my bro out there on a kamikaze mission like some has done in, in like this guy, bro. As soon as you jump out, clear that whole chicken spot out. I was actually thinking at that point just to make sure nobody else around and, you know, I mean, with, with, with the Lord's grace, nothing happened, but so, so many times things has happened, you know what I mean? And people has been really reckless. And I'm just fortunate enough to even tell that story of being able to like say like one time or whatever that when I was thinking consciously, I was able to intervene. And from that point on, though, no, I all I always maintain a level of conscious thinking because I never know. And I also would look more into the beef sometimes too, instead of just jumping off the porch and jumping out the window. Sometimes I started to ask more questions. You know, yeah. I started not to be so you know in the rush. I don't think a lot of these young dudes ask questions. Or oh, where they from? Boom, they this. Let's go. You know, I don't know if brothers is asking questions nowadays. And yeah, that's why you see so many. That's why you see so many innocent people, little kids, and all of that getting hit with straight bullets. Cause niggas ain't niggas ain't doing the surveillance of the area, nah. or niggas ain't even caring about the surveillance. You feel nah, what I'm not, saying? So, not, not so, and I don't want to say anything like we super tough or we stupid. We this is just the life that we live. It's all verified. My man Pistol. You know what I mean, he done did what he had to do in his life. I did what I had to do. We both from neighborhoods that's verifiable. We're not from like the YouTube era, era in the sense where we just relaying like a bunch of, you know, unsolidified, like that's why I like your channel because it comes from neighborhood stories and you talk about stuff that happened in the community. Let me get some history before all this because in New York, we still young enough to have had a history before blood, some of us. So, I, or before whatever gang we joined. So I'll be wanting to know a little bit of that. You know, I'll be wanting to verify some of these from these dudes' neighborhoods. Like, what kind of rank you hold, what kind of position you hold in the community that you were born and raised in, instead of just bragging about like a jail or some gang shit, whereas 
that don't really fully, fully make you a man, you know? It's the relationships you may keep, it's the bonds you may have, and, you know, and that's the, you know, end of result of this conversation that I'm happy to have had a bond with a good brother where I potentially saved a life, I learned something out of that, and I was able to move forward and not that I didn't become a saint after that, but I was definitely more conscious and more aware of how I engage in war after that. It was definitely a point to teach me, like, you just don't jump out the window, because you never know. I could have jumped out the window, and, you know, I know this man whole family, mothers, brothers, like, we really from the same block. You know what I'm saying? So, and he's a little younger than me, so it didn't really connect with Pistol as to who he was and who he was related to me, in a sense, in that moment, because he's a couple years younger than me, like four or five years, but we still family. And I was... You know, so that's really what it is, bro. And, you know, I'm happy you be having your platform to let us come up here. Just build and just, you know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, bro. Shout out to shout out to the bro pistol too. You know that's my son. We was in Hudson yeah, together. Yeah, yeah I mean yeah, we was in yeah. Hudson together. We was in D Cottage. We we had the mob yeah. up north, you feel he, me? He got but, a lot of love for you. He definitely said my son Laz is a gangster. So yeah, that's that's my fucking dude. Yeah, he definitely said saying Laz is a gangster. Shout out.